we were up for the MVP summit. What were some of the exciting announcements that you uh, you saw, David? Oh my goodness. Well, let me tell you, what was announced was Wait, was that NDA? Okay, we'll scrub that, don't worry. Welcome to Power Platform Connections, where we highlight the amazing personalities of our community contributors, and we take a look at all the incredible articles, blogs, and contributions that you've been making over the past week. My name is David Warner, Community Program Manager with Microsoft, and with me, my co-host. Hey, I'm Hugo Bernier, and uh, I always say every single week, I say this week is a very special episode. But this week, I really mean it. It's a special episode, because we were not in our home offices this week. We were up in the mothership at Seattle, uh, I guess Redmond, Washington, at Microsoft headquarters for the MVP Summit. We got to meet a lot of amazing people in the MVP community. Uh, I, I love it. It was such a good reminder of what we've been missing over the last few years due to the pandemic and everything. Uh, I hope that this is just the, the restart of what will be you know, an annual event again for everybody because it was really great to see everybody in person. Um, and even those that were hybrid, I heard there was fantastic interactions with. So it was really nice to be able to get to know everybody again, see them in person, all in one place. Um, of course, everyone enjoys going up to Microsoft, getting pictures in front of the visitor center, Microsoft sign, going to this company store, getting that swag. Uh, and it's so different for us, right? We're mm -hmm. Maybe employees here, but we're still fanboys of uh, of the brand. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I my favorite part is I I can't tell you how many people came to me and they're so excited to meet me in person and they're like, oh my god, David, I'm so happy to see you in person. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was actually quite funny. <laughs> yeah, you know that still happens every once in a while. Um, I, ironically, they probably said, "Now the door's right there, David." So please, uh, I told you. Uh, the lawyers have told you. Uh, please stay away. It was a little difficult to do our interviews this last week, but uh, we managed, didn't we? We did. We did. We we did have some fun. We were able to get out and uh, do some promo recording for the upcoming Microsoft Power Platform Conference in October. Uh, there was some dragon sightings, which was very fun. Um, there was a moment where we went in to try to get a couple of friends from the community to help us out on a video. And I'm pretty sure the security guy, after he saw me walking in in the dragon outfit, was about ready <laughs> to kick me out the door or tackle me, which was pretty funny. Uh, and, then, and then somebody from Microsoft ran over and said, no, 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 he's safe. He's with us. He's with us. So it was uh, it was very fun. But uh, yeah, we got to set aside some time with uh, some community members, a couple that we got to interview. So let's roll the clip. Welcome to Power Platform Connections. In this small little episode, we're going to be interviewing an amazing MVP. My name is David Warner. I'm a community program manager for Microsoft. And with me, my co-host. I am Hugo Bernier, and I'm happy to introduce our favorite MVP for today's episode, at least, <laughs> Ita Sivasalam. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm always excited to see these two amazing human beings here. I'm looking forward to meeting more often this year. Human beings? Yes. Yeah. Not, not aliens, the nicest not dinosaurs, so, human oh. beings. <laughs> dragons, right? Awesome. And dragons. Too. All right. Well, we are on site here at the MPP Summit, so we wanted to take a moment out to talk to Geetha. So uh, one of the things that you said you love as a personal uh, choice is Rome and Italian food. So what are some of your best memories, some of your favorite food? Yeah, I am a big history buff. I uh, love to read about historical events and uh, Rome is just flourishing with lots of history, lots of architecture, lots of good, you know, just stuff that you can just walk in the street and you'll find things being excavated here and there. So the, the Roman Forum is one of my favorite places. And I think every year I have friends who go there and still tell me they're still finding stuff, still digging up stuff. So I think I just enjoy just going to Rome, just, you know, just getting immersed in the history around that and kind of just feel like maybe if I can time travel, that would be awesome. Um, I just love food. I think um, having food in Rome just opened up my eyes that the best pizzas mm. are in Rome, mm. not the pizzas like what we eat here. Right. Um, so yeah, you, you and gelatos. You never want to miss the gelatos. There. They are amazing. Uh, now you are going to be speaking at the Microsoft Power Platform Conference in October. Yes. Uh, of course, you're big in the community. Let's start talking first about how uh, your involvement in the community drives you. I um, love that it's always a full cycle, 
that's how it works. The community is very giving. You're able to, you know, share what you learn, share your experiences, challenges. And then when someone learns from you, they have that to give back to someone else who's along the same journey. So it's a full cycle. I love that we all go with the phrase of make, share, empower each other. Awesome. Yeah. And do you mind telling us what you're going to be talking about? As the yeah, podcast sure. Conference? So there are two sessions. My first session is going to be about uh, transforming your business using the Power Trio. Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate. Uh, you know, it's uh, there are exciting possibilities of what you can do with these tool sets. Um, just going to talk about how you can amplify um, actionable insights and accelerate better decision making with these tools. That's my first session there. And my second session is going to be with my amazing co-presenter Uday. Um, we're going to be talking about how you can harness the power of external data sources uh, in the Power Platform. Data is king, but there's often scenarios where if your data is siloed out in different systems, it can get challenging to get meaningful insights. So we're going to talk to you about all the pros, cons, various techniques that you can use and things that we've experienced and resolutions and tips and tricks to be able to harness and unleash the power of external data sources. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day and week here to spend with us at the MVP Summit. We appreciate and love being able to get to know everybody in the community. Thanks for all the great work. A little nugget in our episode. Nuggets and pizza. Now I'm starving. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I am very excited and looking forward to Vegas and hopefully I see everybody in Vegas. All right. That was a ton of fun sitting down with Geetha. Uh, I love the fact that we coined a new phrase for this show, an episode, just a short little app-sized nugget of information that we're able to enjoy and learning about each other. So thank you, Geetha, for spending some time with us. Now it's time to take a look at the blogs and the articles and all the amazing contributions that you've been making over the past week. If you would like us to cover those contributions that you're still working on, you can do that when you tweet or you share on LinkedIn. Just make sure to use Power Platform Connects, hashtag Power Platform Connects, and we will collect and harvest all the amazing work that you're doing. So Hugo, what have you got for us this week? All right, let's go through the articles. Our first article is by Ellis Karen. Ellis is a super user in the Power User community, and he's writing an article on how to extract and send your SharePoint list item comments via an email. This is a very common scenario that people need to be able to send comments, and they want to use Power Automate to do that. So Ellis here creates a tutorial where he leverages Power Automate and he retrieves all the comments associated to a particular SharePoint list item and sends them to an email recipient. Eliza Benitez writes an article on how to open a model-driven app form in Vue from a Canvas app for Power Apps Mobile. If you remember last week, an article on how to open a form or a view in a regular desktop, uh, but what Eliza is showing now is how to do the same thing directly from um, your on your mobile device, uh, directly from a model model driven app, and it is possible. It's a very cool, very short but very cool uh, example on how to do that, and this is a video that you can follow. Speaking of videos, Shane Young, the Shane, uh, has a video on how to making. Uh, choice columns searchable in Power Apps. In Power Apps, when you search columns, it only usually searches text columns. If you have a choice column, uh, normally it will not search the text value. But in his example, Shane uses the add column method to convert a choice column to a text value, and then voila, it's searchable and becomes available in search results. So great example there, Shane. Our next blog post is by Keith Atherton, who talks about creating a Power Apps mobile QR code. So it's a super quick way to open a Power App on your mobile device. Um, all you need to do is really go to your Power App and look at the settings and look at the Power App mobile QR code in the Apps Details section. You can scan it directly uh, from your phone and open that in your uh, mobile device. Great tip there. Michael Michel talks about how to analyze your Dynamics data in Amazon Web Services. So in his post, really what Michael is talking about here is if you have Dynamics data, um, you, you know that Dynamics already captures lots of information 
about your activities with your customers and your interactions and sales and other key business processes. Uh, and this data is, you know, the insights that you can get from this data is invaluable. Now, there's already built-in capabilities in Dataverse and in Dynamics to do the analysis, but what if you wanted to drill further into your data? And what if your organization is already using AWS throughout for uh, data insights? So uh, Michael explains how to do that, and he basically shows how to use Amazon AppFlow and the connectors for Dynamics 365 to be able to get the data in AWS and do the analysis. It's a great article, and like every article that Michael writes, it's in great details with lots of information. And finally for this week, Dion Taylor writes a, about Copilot for Dynamics 365 and customer service. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that uh, you know Microsoft has new AI capabilities called Copilot, and this is something that's coming up in Dynamics 365 coming soon. But what Dion talks about here is some of the scenarios that you can use Copilot in Dynamics 365. One of them, which is about asking questions, uh, so it can you know Copilot can actually look at your knowledge base articles stored in Dynamics 365 customer service and or external source. And then you can actually ask questions and it will actually respond to your question within the context of those uh, knowledge base articles or ex external knowledge content. It's a great way to, if you think about it, let's say your um, the example that Dion uses is uh, people that are helping with HVAC units to be able to ask questions about how to perform a certain action uh, certain maintenance action in HVAC units and to look at all the, the knowledge base articles on how to do that. That's a great scenario. Copilot also allows you to write emails. So the, the other example that Dion talks about here is help me write an email uh, to really from within the context of talking to the client. And there's uh, five different types of responses that agents can use to, uh, from suggesting a call, requesting more information, empathizing with feedback, provide service details, and resolving the customer's uh, problems. And so there's also an option to, to use uh, custom options as well for agents to type whatever type of email information they're looking for. And then finally, there's the integration of Copilot with chat. And as always, Dion has an awesome video that accompanies her article. So please go take a look at the article and watch the video. And that's it for the blog posts. And we're done. Actually, no, we're not, because we have something else to do this week, don't we? David, what are we doing? Yes, we've got another episode for you. Those little nugget-sized interviews with our community members. We were able to interview another community contributor up in Seattle, Chris Piasecki, Business Applications MVP. So let's take a look at what he had to share with the community. Roll it! Welcome to Power Platform Connections. We're live in Redmond, Washington at Microsoft headquarters at the MVP Summit. My name is David Warner, Community Program Manager for Power Platform. And with me, my co-host... I am Hugo Bernier, and I have the honor to introduce a fellow Canadian today, Chris Piasecki. Chris? Hey, everyone. Chris Piasecki. I'm a Microsoft MVP based in Canada, uh, Edmonton, specifically for those who happen to know where that is on the map, western part of the uh, tundra, as sometimes we call it. I've been working with Dynamics for almost eight years now, uh, Dynamics Serum specifically. Uh, then I kind of moved over to the Power Platform um, a few years back once sort of that shift from the what was previously known as CDS or, um, kind of made its way into the platform and that really kind of was the, the light bulb moment for me. We want the uh, community to have an opportunity to get to know you a little bit. So we asked you some personal questions, things like favorite food is pizza. So we're not exactly in Chicago or you know a famous pizza place, but you are in the States. Any special pizza that you've had this week? Yeah, you know, I'm a simple guy. I like pepperoni just pepperoni no fruit and veggies on my pizza that's you know that's a that's a no a no go yeah okay just pepperoni extra cheese uh sometimes sometimes i'll get the what they call it, brooklyn pepperoni so the larger pepperoni uh, yeah. on it, so you don't like to be too cheesy then is what you're saying yeah. uh, the wrong well, show for that i guess yeah. right oh 
there are moments for that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, it was ironic because one of the things that you put in that was a favorite for you was your movie. Now, what makes that ironic is that your favorite movie was Hook. I know another Canadian who happens to have a favorite movie of Hook. Tell us a little bit about why it's your favorite movie. Yeah, yeah. So it's just one of those childhood uh, movies that I grew up watching a lot with my dad. Uh, my dad really liked the movie. Um, we always used to watch it so, so often and always like the concept of Peter Pan, you know, never having to grow up, right? Being a kid, kid forever, not having to, you know, get responsibilities, you know, no, no, don't have to adult as they, as, as they call <laughs> it these days. But um, yeah, it's just a really uh, fond memory of, of um, watching that with my dad. And um, also, of course, Robin Williams, you know, one of my favorite actors, uh, great guy. Um, and, you know, it's got all, all, all those awesome actors in it too. So, yeah. Yeah, Hook totally came out when I was a kid, too, for me. Um, Just a bigger kid, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you love about the community. What's really kind of separates, I think, our biz apps community compared to everyone else is just the diverse set of um, people in terms of what background they come from, their profession. So not everyone's, you know, traditionally started with IT. They may come from a background such as like accounting, for example. So like Matt, Deva Matt Devaney, another mm -hmm. fellow MVP, also a fellow Canadian. He Hockey started fan, in, right? Yeah, Hockey exactly. Fan, right? He started as an MVP or, or started in accounting and then he got in, into it and now he's an MVP. And so that's just totally awesome. And, and just, yeah, meeting all sorts of different people. And I feel like the community is a lot, really, really positive and that um, you know, just bringing out those good vibes also, it's, it's infectious, I guess, is one word I would describe yeah. it as. It's hard not to get, you know, uh, as excited or share that same sentiment as others. In the community forums, I mean, I, sometimes that's kind of a, um, a solo sort of thing, but I mean, I've gotten, I've gotten to meet actually um, some other now MVPs as well, you know, kind of um, in that forum, like uh, I specifically would contribute in the Dataverse community forums, and there's kind of like a race between the three of us. So two of the other MVPs, uh, Eric Regnier and Drew Pogerman, were kind of the top three contributors yeah. there. So there's always a bit, a little bit of competition there. Uh, I've gotten to build some pretty cool uh, relationships with um, them and, and many others. Awesome, awesome. So you've been an MVP for a while, but is this your first MVP summit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's my very first um, in-person MVP summit. I've been an MVP since July 2021. So uh, last year, of course, with every you know, everything in the world still going on. Um, it was still virtual events, so my first summit was virtual. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those, I felt like it was just another one of those other online events. Um, whereas, you know, um, finally going back to in-person, uh, it's just something I really love, just connecting with people. There's just no replacement for that. So I was super excited um, when it was announced it was in-person. I you know, immediately booked my travels as soon as as soon as I was able to. And yeah, it's uh, really awesome to be here meeting you guys in person and all the other awesome MVPs um, as well that I haven't, um, you know, only been just kind of virtual faces um on you know on the other side of the screen yep. right so absolutely just... you're going to be in person at the uh, power platform conference in vegas in october what are you going to be talking about yeah yeah this is actually the second time i'm going there was i was the first in-person event was earlier in september for the first power platform conference which was absolutely awesome didn't quite make the the speaker cut that time but um yeah this time i've got two sessions i got a 60 minute session and i'm gonna be talking about the xrm toolbox um, and, you know, um, really just bringing awareness to that awesome community built tool, especially now that we're starting to see a lot of adoption of Dataverse from, you know, those that may have traditionally started with SharePoint. And so I think it's, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that may not have actually ever heard of the tool. And so I think this is a good, a good opportunity to, you know, build awareness of it and, and, and just, you know, uh, lift up that, that tool. I think it's just an amazing tool that everyone needs to know of that, that uses Dataverse. Um, then my second one is a 25 minute session. It's just going to be a really lightning fast top 10, um, tips for UI or UX, um, um, configurations in model driven apps. So this will be really quick configurations you can do without having to do any code in your model driven apps. So that'll, um, really increase the user experience with, um, very minimal effort. We cannot wait to see you again in October in Las Vegas at the conference. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day here at the, the MVP Summit to talk to us. Uh, check out more at aka.ms slash powerplatform dash connections.
Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this special MVP Summit episode where we're able to get to know on site at the MVP Summit a little more about our amazing community contributors. Now, if you would like us to also include your blogs and articles and videos and all the amazing contributions that you're doing in the community, you got it. All you need to do is tag your contributions on Twitter or LinkedIn with the hashtag Power Platform Connects. That right there. Yep. You got there it go. the right time, the I first time. Maybe. Yep, Good I job. know. It's only taken 7 billion episodes. All right. So, check that out but hugo there's one more thing that they could do to get involved what is that let's say that it's like friday afternoon and your boss asks you to deliver a feature in the power platform and you just can't get the answer you need well you can go to ak.ms slash join the community and join the power users community and ask questions you can help other people by answering their questions and you know really you have a larger team than you thought. We've got millions of people there to help you, and we can't wait to have you there. So join the community at AKA to the mess. Join the community. Did I mention Operators join the are community? Yes. standing by. <laughs> That's right. Well, that's Pop. it for us for this episode. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah, so like. Itchy nose. Places. <laughs> Insert article here. Join the community. Join, join. We take a look at all the extra, not extra, not extra. Episodes. <laughs> See what I did there? Trademark.